with Fullerton Professional Organizing and today we're talking about uh, someone I ran across named Jennifer Roskamp. Now she is known for being the queen of juggling all things she says and she has nine kids and she homeschools and so she does have a lot um, that she's juggling. She talks about a realistic way to overcome all of the stressful things in your day. She says it doesn't take a lot to kind of just master a few different things to actually feel like, wow, I did okay today. She says, do you have to give in to being overwhelmed? She says, we're sold this kind of thinking. We're just kind of sold into thinking that life has to be a struggle, especially when you have kids and juggling all the things, or especially when you're working outside of the house. She says, we just kind of expect them to be there, and we just kind of expect that as it is, all the struggles and the stress. Um, she says, start with the three most stressful things in your life. She says, don't try to tackle all the things in your day that stress you out, just the top three. And I know for a lot of parents, it's that first thing in the morning when you're trying to get your kids off to school, at least that was the stressful time of day for me. Um, that is the only one that still to this day sticks out and my kids are grown. Um, but she says, just pick the top three most stressful things. And um, for her, she was talking about how first thing in the morning, getting your kids ready for school was hers also. And getting home after school and trying to get supper ready and all the activities that her kids were in and I don't remember what else but we'll we'll uh, look at it and and get there uh, she says but here's what we need to recognize and where we're going from here is we can't change all the things that are stressful about our days but we can start with just a few things and you'll find that when you start with just a few things it changes your ability to manage more. So she says it's kind of the same as about uh, also, and also think about a room in your house. This is another really good way to think about it. If your whole house kind of has an overall chaotic feel, right? If it's just kind of a mess everywhere, stuff is everywhere, wherever the reasons are right and a lot of things were really good reasons things we can't even really control we can't control what other people do to a large extent we can't control the size of our homes you know what it's like to be packed into a space that's way too small and have way too much stuff and way too many people she says, so if you have this overall feeling of a just disorganized, chaotic mess in your entire home, but then, but put time, effort, and blood, sweat, and tears into fixing just one area, this is kind of your peaceful, organized, uncluttered, clean area. And you always have that one clean, one clean, organized area in your home. That's going to be your haven. That's going to be where you can go to get a breath of fresh air. That's going to be where kind of like you reset all the time and that room is going to be, it's going to make you feel slightly different as you're about your home overall because that one area is now taken care of. Plus, you're probably going to be motivated to tackle another area. A lot of organizers say, make your bedroom, your master bedroom, your one space that you keep completely unorganized because that's, I mean, let me say that again. Your master bedroom, keep it organized and tidy because you need one space that's completely uh, organized and peaceful. 
and the master bedroom should always be that peaceful place. But that's what a lot of organizers say. Of course, for you, it may be different. And for her, it is different. So we're going to continue. Um, I always make sure, and this is, let me remind you who's speaking. Jennifer Roskamp says that she makes sure that her office is clean and organized, her kitchen is clean, and her sunroom. is cleaned and organized. Those are her areas that she goes to first. If the rest of the house is a shambles, I can kind of just deal with that much more easily. Um, and for me, um, and this probably wasn't exactly the right thing to do. I'm not saying it is, this is just what I did personally. Um, I kind of just shut my kids' bedrooms now, don't get me wrong. I did try to get them to clean their rooms every once in a while. And once a year, I did completely reorganize it and declutter their rooms. But i that was just one less thing for me to be stressed over. If I could just close their bedroom doors and not harp on them all the time to keep their rooms clean. Um, so, you know, you, you pick your battles, and that was mine. Um, now, she says, um, if you identify, it, you can, your stressful days. So, let's talk, start talking about stressful days. So, like, if you can identify, if you can spend some time thinking about just three of the most stressful times of your day. Um. She said last week or maybe the last couple of weeks, if you can think about how the day unfolded and you think about what happened, you'll probably find that there are some common things. And she says, take control of those three things. Uh, just three different times of my day will make my overall day feel much less overwhelmed. Um, the simple concepts is taking control of just three different times in your overall day will make your overall day feel much less overwhelmed. Because again, we can't fix it all. We can't, certainly not all at once. We cannot take all our stressful days and fix them. We can only do one small section at a time. And that's just like when I tell you about organizing your home. You're just going to take one bite at a time. Uh, she says, ideally, and if you feel like the whole thing is just stressful, then you are in the right place because we're going to give you these little more peaceful times, more peace filled times by the time we're done here. Um, we can do the simple things we're going to talk about today to fix little parts of your day and make that go better. Um, so step number one, first step you need to take action. Step number one, the first thing you need to do is to identify these three times. And you may say, I have way more than three. I cannot even I don't even know how to narrow it down. Well, narrow it down to just three. But three's enough where you don't, or three's not too much where you feel overwhelming and think, oh my gosh, okay, how am I supposed to ever make this work? Um, you know, the times... When you think about yesterday, when you think about the last few days, when you think about the last week or the last couple of weeks, when are those times that you feel flustered? One of those times that you feel like you have a short fuse. One of those times that it just feels like crazy chaos all around you. Maybe it would be a time where you had to set 
a time limit. These are often at least one of the sticking points in the day. So, for instance, you have to get kids out the door for school by a certain time. You have to get a meal on the table by a certain time. Time limits for whatever reason. So, a lot of times these, when we have a hard and fast deadline, those by default are often going to be one of the things that's very likely that you could be having this overall flustered feeling. So if you have people in the home that wake up kind of on the wrong side of the bed every single day, that could, or they're slow moving and you're trying to get them to move along or whatever it is, or work your or at work, your boss is grumpy until noon comes, whatever it might be. But these are some of the things that you need to think about. All right, before dinner, which she calls the witching hour, step one is to identify the three different times. I'm going, to, uh, and then she says that time where your kids it may be that time where your kids are coming home from school, or even if you don't have kids, right? It's that time. It's that time before dinner. You're going, you're getting to the end of your day. You've been at work. You've almost ready to leave work. Or maybe it's right when you get home and you're tired and traffic was bad and you know you had to make dinner but you don't feel like it and you're tired and nothing sounds good. You know, those times. Just start thinking about your day, she says, and discover what those three most stressful times of the day are. Identify what makes that time stressful. So that's the next step identify what about that time is stressful. We can't solve the problem until we really figure out what is causing the problem because you, you do have to make dinner, you do have to eat, but what's making it so stressful? You, you could guess, you could maybe come relatively close and get some of the situations handled correctly, but you do have to know exactly to the best of your ability, what is causing the problem so that you can address those with some solutions. Um, now, talking about step two still, I want to encourage you to take your time because the more difficult struggles that you can pinpoint, the more solutions you're going to be able to come up with. And obviously, the more solutions you can come up with, the more ways that you can overcome this problem time. The more likely it is that this time is going to be substantially better because again, we're trying to reduce the stress that we feel in our overall day. Now, come up with ways to address these problems. Step three. Now that you know what all the issues are, you know the situation, you understand the problems that need to be addressed, now let's start coming up with ways to address them. For instance, one of the things that I said it's stressful for me was because I'm driving kids back and forth, well, I can't really say, well, I'm not going to drive my kids to practice or to school, that problem is solved, right? I can't really say that. So you're gonna make it more enjoyable. But I will tell you one of the solutions that I have for that one of the things that I came up with to make that less stressful time. And you can use this technique for anything you do in your home as well that you, is un -enjoy, that you don't enjoy. You can make it more enjoyable. Um, And this is going to be a really good example of how to maybe get creative with some of the things that you have for action step number two. So I still have to take my kids to practice and that's stressful. I don't love driving. I don't love the coming and going from my house all the time. So it is just kind of naturally something that I don't love. But what I do love is listening to audiobooks and podcasts like this one. Um, Fullerton Professional Organizing. 
But, so, I always try to engage with the kids when the kids are in the vehicle. Yes, and that is what I always did as a parent. Um, we went to church in McAllen, which was about 45 minutes away. I tried to always spend time with my I took advantage of that time to talk to my kids on the way to church and the way home from church. But if you're sitting in waiting for your kids in an activity and you're alone in your vehicle, you can always listen to podcasts. And I always listen to organizing podcasts or I try to listen to something um, Christian, some Christian um, teaching that will help me. Um, and that's what I do. Um, or just listening to some praise and worship or spending some time in prayer. But I'm going to get back to Jennifer Roskamp. Uh, she says... She, listens to podcast. She says, I always try to engage with my kids when we're in the car. When I have kids with me in the car, I try to carry on a conversation and that kind of thing. It's especially helpful if you don't get to talk to your kids a whole lot because, you know, they're in activities a lot. Um, but I'm going to have an empty car and I get to listen to an audio book or a podcast while I'm driving. I love doing those things and I don't get a chance to do them very often. They're all actually almost always something that I use in a reward situation. Like this where like for instance I'll take another thing that I don't like doing like folding laundry and I'll listen to an audiobook or a podcast while I'm folding the laundry. It makes it not as uh, bad. Same with working out. You can listen to things that will take your mind off of your workout. All right. Now, um, going with the uh, driving my kids back and forth at that time, but I can make a little bit more peaceful for me and make and a little bit more enjoyable for me so that I can set up off so I'm not as set off during that time now so if you can also control some of your responses for me when I get that 10 minute break of just listening to something that I want to listen to or something times listening to nothing at all um in the car and by myself, I can come back and I'm much better equipped to get back in it, it during that time. And it's amazing how much of a difference that makes. So she engages and talks to her kids on the way to the activities. She drops them off and on her way home by herself, um, that's when she listens to the podcast and then on the way there to pick them up. And then of course she engages and talks to them on the way home. But um, now she says the brainstorm, she says how beneficial it is to not have to make dinner during that time of the day. Um, so that was another stressful time for her is dinner time. So what she would do in the mornings, and remember she homeschools, so this is possible for her and it may not be possible for you. You may, your solution may be to create a super easy meal plan for those days uh, that you have activities if you um, can't do what she's doing. But in the morning when she's making breakfast, she's also prepping for her dinner so that her dinner time will go more smoothly. So let me, so... I try to get as much of the meal done, the dinner meal done at the same time as I'm doing breakfast and doing the morning stuff or the night before, or I use my crock pot or I use my instant pot. I do whatever I can to make preparing a meal as easy as possible during that time because I have all these other things and I know that 
that was one of the ways that I can overcome it. If I could just take the dinner part of it out, it makes it a little bit better. So you can see how working from action step number two to action step number three, you can start to see how in time you can start to brainstorm through some of these things and say, I can't completely get rid of dinner time, but there are some things that I can do to make them slightly better. And it might take a little bit of creativity and maybe a day or two to come up with some different things. And maybe you'll, you're trying a thing or two, maybe you'll try something, you'll say, well, that didn't work, and then you'd have to try something else. And for me personally, I use a, um, I use my, um, no, I don't, I have a crock pot that I use occasionally, but what makes my dinner time easier is my air fryer. I just about cook everything in the air fryer because it doesn't have to be fried to uh, fried food to cook in the air fryer. You can cook just about anything on the air fry setting. Um, now, so these are, this is a place to start. If your days feel overall stressed out, then you may feel like I can't even start. I don't even know. This is a great place to start. This is a real action plan that also takes reality into play. Just like I mentioned, I still have to make dinner. I can make a lot of meal of the meal outside of that time so that it's still better. All right. Reality. We can't get it all done. I think we're kind of held up to this gold standard of we're supposed to be able to get it all done and we're supposed to be able to get it all done with a smile. And the reality is we can't get it all done. It's not the gold standard. It's kind of a warped gold standard. So, right? Um, there's no way that I could ever become that. But the reality is that those other moms and stuff that you're seeing on Pinterest, all the Pinterest perfect uh, stuff on Facebook and Pinterest, it's not real. We know it's not real because you can't be that way all the time. That's just a little segment of their life. Now, of course, there are some that have different degrees of time and energy to do all the things, and that is a real possibility. But there's no way that we can ever become that perfect Pinterest perfect. But the reality is that those other moms and stuff that you're seeing, those other women that you're seeing that have it all together, those strong, powerful career women, they still struggle too. They just don't always show the struggles. So once we embrace that being perfect and having everything run perfect, it just isn't realistic. We have to embrace that. And once we're done with the kind, that kind of thinking, you're, you'll find that you are not as paralyzed to start coming up with simple solutions to t things like this. One small thing at a time. Having an organized day with time left over, it really is possible. You just have to understand that all you really have to do is just look at one small thing at a time, one bite at a time, and deal with it one small thing at a time. And perfection isn't realistic. Now, accomplishing the right things. I love to talk about kind of accomplishing less, but accomplishing the right things. I like to talk about managing less trying to perfect less, making, uh, 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 taking on less in order to achieve more, to be more and to have more. It really is possible. It all comes down to doing the right things at the right times and in the right way. All right, now just a little overview. And I believe Jennifer Roskamp, and I'm not sure if this was the first person I heard this from, but I know she does it, and I have adapted it. I don't know where I found out about it first, but um, Jennifer Roskamp also says, if you have a space that needs to be tidied quickly, 
just, or you have a room that, um, let's say it's the living room and someone is coming over. She keeps a, a very pretty basket that is, matches her living room decor, but has a lid on it. If she needs to tidy her living room and it's really driving her crazy, she will go and throw everything into that basket and put the lid on it. Company comes over, her home is nice and tidy. She says at the end of the evening, of course, it all has to be put where it goes, but at least she was able to tidy the space really quickly until she had time to have her kids put up their toys or put up any remotes or anything that needed to be put back in its place. And I love that idea. I use that all over my home. Um, I do have a basket that stays in the living room. I would love to get a prettier one with a lid. I do not have one with a lid. But what I did discover would work is if you find those cube-shaped uh, ottomans and then you can, that fit under your coffee table, you can do that and those can be your, your pretty baskets as well. I'm fixing to get two of those because I have a round uh, coffee table, so it kind of looks weird to just have one under one side of the coffee table. So, I'll, and I don't want four. I don't really need four. So, and they can be used as extra seating for the kids as well. If you have lots of kids come over, they can pull those out and sit on them. But anyway, I just want two on each side of the round um, coffee table and it fits under the coffee table. So it's out of place. It looks like it belongs. It looks like it's just extra seating or a place to put your feet. And um, you can stash the remotes and all the stuff that your husband's, I mean, your kids <laughs> leave in the living room. All right, let me do a little quick review of Jennifer Ross Camp, Time Management for Busy Women. Uh, she says, a realistic way to overcome stressful, chaotic days and not feel so overwhelmed with your life so that you can have some peace. Uh, it's easy to be overwhelmed and think that that's all there is to it. But we need to recognize that we can't change all the things that are stressful about our days, but we can start with just a few things that will make a huge difference. I would love to be able to have all of my days be stress-free, but the reality for me and probably the reality for you is you're not going to kind of go in and out of really stressful times into really peaceful times. Or ideally, if you feel like the whole thing is just stressful, then you are in the right place because we're going to give you these little more peaceful times, more peace. You can't attack the whole day, but that doesn't mean we have to just continue on as is. You can do simple things to fix little parts of your day so that overall your day feels better. If you can remove yourself from the situation and get yourself a short little break, oftentimes you can back, uh, come back much better able to deal with the stressful situation. Understand that you can't completely get rid of stresses, but there are some things that you can do to make them slightly better. Recognize that too often we are held up to this gold standard or Pinterest perfect life, Facebook perfect life, uh, and we're supposed to be able to get it all done and we're supposed to be able to get it all done with a smile and the reality is we can't get it all done. And it's not the gold standard. It's a warped gold standard. Now, I'm going to add, this isn't in uh, Jennifer, uh, Jennifer Roskamp didn't say this, but for me, maybe 
we have too many activities that could also be a, an area. I know our kids, we want our kids to do all these activities, but sometimes our school work is more important. Now she homeschools, so they're home all the time. So those outside activities may be some of the only outside activities they have. But I know how stressful it was when I had two kids and I was, well, actually I had one that had golf super early in the morning and thank goodness my husband took that one over because that one was super, super early in the morning. And then my daughter wanted to do all these other activities. And my son did have Taekwondo at some, uh, before golf. But, um, you know, letting your kids do as many activities as they want to do is too stressful. Having them pick one a year is more manageable. So, you know, make sure you're not stressing yourself out unnecessarily by having too many activities. Um, so understand that you can't control, you can't completely get rid of stress, but there are some things that you can do to make them slightly better. Recognize that too often we are held to that gold standard. Um, the reality is we can't get it all done and it's not the gold standard. It's a warped gold standard. Accomplishing less, but accomplishing the right things and managing less by taking on less in order to achieve more is really possible. All right. Now this is, uh, I'm coming to the end here. Identify three different stressful times in your overall day that if you could get those three times under control, your day would feel a little calmer. Identify what a, it is about those three times that makes it so stressful. And third, come up with some easy solutions. Come up with ways and action steps that can take that you can take to make these three times less stressful. All right, guys, that is it. I'm going to leave information about Jennifer Ross Camp in the, um, in the description. And uh, I appreciate you. I thank you for coming and listening to me every day and uh, watching me on YouTube and on this podcast. And I will see you on the next one. Thank you for listening.